Hi, this is Chris Grimm, and it's Deep Work Fast. Boy, doesn't uh, stuff go so quick when you do something every week? Anyway, if you didn't know, every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, I am here helping you, bringing tools, ideas, concepts, anything I can to help you be the best that you can be at home and at work in all the roles that you play. Um, today, I want to talk about emotional mastery and double click on a specific emotion, anger. So we dropped a blog yesterday called Mastering Your Anger. And I don't want to do this in a shallow way. So I want you to know that I'm not going to do the normal thing of kind of, you know, talking about breathing exercises, etc. The blog actually has 15 things to help you. I'm not going to read you 15 things. Um, you can read yourself. It's a quick read. Um, and I don't want you to do 15 more things than you're already doing. So in a few minutes, we're going to get to um, why I gave you those 15. But first, I want to talk about why I picked this topic now. It is fall. This moment I'm recording this or I'm live, uh, it will be recording later. So if you're watching it later, it is September of 2024 and it is fall. So I want to talk about why anger and agitation and annoyance and frustration, all the things we kind of associate in the anger family uh, are important for you to become the master of at this time of year. So first of all, fall we get out of summer, kids go back to school. What tends to happen then is at work, people are racing to the end of the year. If you're on a calendar year and that's your fiscal year, if you think about it, there's a lot of things that are coming to an end. You've got fourth quarter. Uh, if you're in sales uh, or, or an operations group, you know that there are quotas and things that have to be met so that you end the year strong, right? You want to make up for whatever quarters you didn't make your numbers. All of those stressors that tend to happen at this time of the year, right? We gear up in September to push through to December. So that can add agitation and anger and annoyance and frustration because there's more activity and pressure. Summer's over. Let's get back to work, everybody, right? On top of that, we've got end of the year weather changes in some parts of the in some parts of the world and even here in Los Angeles where we don't have extreme weather changes, we do experience some weather change. But people who experience all four seasons, you know that as we get out of summer, there tends to be in some places, right? More rain, more gray skies, sometimes it gets really cold. And that can help uh, push people, shouldn't actually say help, but what it does is sometimes it can push people into uh, depression, gloominess, agitation uh, that kind of layers on to whatever's happening. And we have holidays. So holidays tend to have their own flavor of stressors, right? We're spending more money. Uh, most likely there's more events in the calendar so that, um, and people visiting, right? Maybe family visiting, maybe more interactions with your family. Uh, that might be really amazing, but it also often adds a hecticness or a hustle um, and extra activity. Um, and then this year is extra special because we've got a presidential election. And if you are not living under a rock, you know uh, that the media, well, it needs people to pay attention. And so what they do is constantly are flooding us with the most current drama that is associated with a presidential election. I don't know who decided that it needed to be so drama filled, but wowza. So what I have noticed, back to why I wrote this blog, is that, um, first of all, election crazy is ramping up. And I am not an advocate for the kind of drama and crazy, uh, but you sometimes can't seem to like get away from it. And so I thought, you know what, let's be intentional about this time period and let's be intentional on managing your anger, right? I want you to be the best that you can be in all the roles that you play all day, every day. 
That means you being in control of yourself, not allowing surprise attack emotions to pop up and take you off your game, right? That's not great. Let's not do that. So I want to talk first about four types of anger, because what I noted in the last month or so, as more and more people are starting their conversations with me, like, I'm so pissed, or I can't believe this, or how could they think this, or this is happening, that people don't usually understand what anger is. So to be the master of something, you need to actually know what it is. So Heather, can you pop up that slide for me? Heather, mission control, I would die without her. Um, So while she's doing that, I just want to um, tell you that in the chat, we've also put a link to a Psychology Today article written by this author, Melody Stanford Martin. She is the founder of the Brave Talk Project. She also wrote uh, a book, and I think the title's the same, Brave Talk. I love this model. Uh, I think it's a really easy way for adults or children to learn about the four different types of anger that we experience. So if you look at that little chart that's there, and you can see starting uh, on my left, so looking at the screen, your left too, Uh, where it says fight or flight down the side and in the gray gray box, it says short anger. So I want you to think about that. And then we're going to go clockwise around short anger are those spurts of anger. You know, like the kind you get if somebody cuts you off when you're driving, right? Like, dude, you're a jerk. Um, It doesn't usually last, right? So it's a short burst of anger and it usually triggers and or is triggered by your fight or flight response. And by the way, we've talked about this in other Deep Work Fast. We don't just have two responses in fight or flight. If our amygdala is triggered, there's four things that could happen. You could want to fight, like scream, you're a jerk for cutting me off. You could flight or withdraw from the situation. Uh, You could freeze and not know, uh, or you could fawn, like you could people please too much. Um, regardless, it is usually a quick response, right? Because it is triggered by something. And often I use that word when I'm coaching people and I say, you've been triggered or I've been triggered, right? And that is a short response. So that is a response that usually fades away, uh, in 20 minutes or less. And that's how much time oftentimes our bodies, specifically if we're not the master of this, that our body can take to wind down for it to dissipate uh, that that response. Um, Okay, if it lasts for more than 20 minutes and it boils over like a big old pot of soup, you can see if you go here clockwise, we call that rage, right? It's super hot tempered, volatile anger. It's usually disruptive. And if we raise our voice, um, it can be destructive, right? It can be scary to people. Uh, Really common in the workplace, we get... um, called to coach people who have anger management issues. And usually it's because it's not those short bursts that fade out. It's that hot anger that sticks around and feels rageful, like you're on a rampage, right? Um, So that's unhealthy, um, but it it exists. And by the way, uh, I'm not a, a, a proponent to say never be angry. In fact, I just want you to be the master of it. I want you to understand that emotion. I want you to understand what triggers you. And when you are triggered, how to not have it last a long time and stay hot, right? I want you to learn how to turn that burner down and get that to settle down. Um, Okay, so go over around clockwise to long anger. So long anger tends to be something that maybe is with us for a long time. Uh, like at one point in time, it was hot and it was a boiling over pot. Uh, but this is long. So now it's simmering under the surface because maybe it's something else. Like maybe it's grief because you lost someone and you're mad about it. It's unresolved. And I know I've done at least one deep work fast around the importance of resolution. When we don't resolve stuff, it stays with us. And so even though it might not be with us, we don't talk about it all day, every day, because if we were talking about it all the time, that means it's still hot, right? We're still angry about it actively. There's still maybe some rage. 
But when it's just percolating and it stays there at a simmer under the surface, right, that's what we call the longer anger. And sometimes if you go all the way clockwise down to six o'clock on that chart, it can mobilize us, right? It can be something that we go from being really angry about and it can turn into something productive. So that is mobilization. It's kind of like um, my friend Regina Ellis, whose young daughter uh, died of brain cancer. And in response to that, Regina took all of her energy, all of her sadness and her anger and her grief, and she started the Children's Cancer Association, which for 25 years has been doing amazing things, right? That's an example of cold anger. I know it's kind of a weird term, but I think that this is a great model and I wanted to bring it to you because I think it is a really wonderful way, an easy way to think about the four types of anger so that when it happens and pops up, like I said, you can become the master of it. You can know, okay, here it is. How am I going to get to the point where I either completely resolve this so it just goes away, doesn't have any control over me anymore, or get it to the point where I can mobilize it? Or is that even necessary? Can it just fade into the distance and be nothing? Because short little bursts of anger in a healthy way, like the guy who I told you cut us off in traffic there while we were just talking, that just fades away and goes away. Like you never think about it again. So I want you to be the master of yours. I want you to learn about it. And that's why in this blog that I put out yesterday, um, you can take down the chart, Heather. Thank you. Um, I wanted to give you some tools, thank you, to become the master of your own experience. Now, like I was saying, I'm not going to read that to you. I know that you can get that list. It's almost like a checklist. It has so much stuff in there. Some of those things you're probably doing. So I recommend that you consciously and intentionally check out that list. You're probably going to see one or two things that you already do. For instance, guess what's on that list? exercising. So if you're a person who exercises at least a few times a week, if not every day, you can check that off. But it doesn't work alone. And so that's the reason the, this list is so long <laughs> is because remember, we can be triggered by things that we're not ready for. We also can be triggered by our own thoughts uh, or people that we are interacting with on a regular basis. So there's so many different ways that we can experience the intensity of this anger. I want you to take some time and get to know it. So on that list, you are definitely going to see some things like journaling. And then there's going to be some things that might be a surprise to you. I want you to learn about yourself. I want you to be super self-aware. Part of mastery, well, the beginning of mastery is self-awareness and acceptance that these things exist. Then you can have that list of things that you can use either as a regular practice. And I highly recommend you pick five of them, five of 15. It's not that bad. You're probably already doing two. So just get three more. You know what I'm saying? Uh, find the things that you can weave into your normal life. That way it will start to help you master it before all of the holiday stuff and the election craziness and whatever is happening starts to take control and make it worse. Because I promise you, in the next three to four weeks, the election, it's going to get crazier. It's not going to get less. It's going to get louder. It's going to get more divisive. Also, we have current events. We have things happening in the world with not so great things. So our news and social media is full of triggering pictures and concepts. So I just want you to know that and really pay attention to, um, you know, what you're intaking every day. I also want you to pay attention to the kind of music you listen to and your entertainment um, I know that sounds weird, but what I know when I coach people, so please learn from other people's experience when I, um, are working with people or, or an executive, for instance, that has some anger management issues. One of the things that we do in the beginning is kind of take an audit of what that person's ingesting, not just food, but like what music, what books are you reading? What do you watch on TV at night? Like what is your homework? 
uh, environment like? What is your work environment like? And we look at all the things that could be kind of intense, triggering, agitating. And what I mean by that is I'm not a hater, but, you know, there's music. Metallica is a great example. Um, there is some music that's actually made to be agitating. Um, it's not just that type of music. Like I said, I'm not a hater of Metallica, so I just use that as an example. Um, it's, it's kind of up to you, right? So you want to make sure that you know the difference between audio, for instance, that can calm you down and audio vibrations in music or things that you're listening to that actually hype you up right? There are playlists of music available. Of course, we want to work out, for instance, to things that are motivating and make you feel like supercharged. Well, that's not great music to listen to when you need to calm down. Sounds obvious, but it seems, I guess it's not because when I'm coaching some of you and we start to peel it all back and look at what's happening, some of people don't realize when they're actually feeding their own anxiety and uh, agitation by doing things, listening to things, watching things that are actually keeping that adrenaline moving and keeping those chemicals moving in your body instead of helping you get peaceful and calm and calm down. So let's set a goal for ourselves. Uh, I'm going to kind of nag everybody about this. I will probably come back with more of this as things start to develop here into the holidays and election season to remind everybody to pull that list back out. Calm yourself down. Get to know the way you experience, like I said, anger is the headline. Under it is frustration, annoyance, agitation, etc. You should know your own triggers you should know how to either avoid those triggers, uh, get rid of those triggers, right? Or deal with them if you can't get rid of them and you can't avoid them. If they show up and they trigger you, you're in charge of you, really. Um, and to be your best self, you have to want to do that and have the tools to do it. So happy to help you. Next week, I will be back. And um, this is Deep Work Fast. I hope you are doing the deep work. And I hope I'm helping you doing it fast. If there's any other topics you need, leave that in the chat and I'll see you next week.